In this video, I'm going to show you how to number your pages, which is really important, how to insert a table of contents, as well as how to insert a list of tables and a list of figures in the preamble of the document. You will only be able to insert the table of contents, the list of tables and the list of figures in the way that I'm going to do it here. If you have automated the formatting of your document by making use of the styles and navigation pane, as well as automating the captioning of your tables and figures using the references tab within Word and the insert caption button. So let's start with numbering your pages. Numbering pages is a very important part of formatting your document and a very important part of the submission process. It's really difficult for people to give you feedback on your work when you have not numbered your pages. So this is not only for the benefit of your reader, but it's also for your benefit. Another thing with the page numbers is that if you don't actually have page numbers in your document there's no point in inserting a table of contents because then your reader won't actually be able to use the information in your table of contents to find the information within your document. To insert page numbers into your documents you can go to the insert tab and you'll see an option to add page numbers. Here you can click on the page number option and it'll open a dialog box that helps you to choose options for how you want to insert your page numbers. The first option here allows you to choose whether you want your page numbers at the top of the page or whether you want your page numbers at the bottom of your page. And as you can see, Word is giving you a preview of what the page numbers will look like depending on the options that you choose. Then you have the option of aligning it where you want. So you can align it on the left, in the center, or on the right, or you can choose the inside or outside options, in which case the numbers will appear on opposite sides within your document. I'm just going to choose right, and then you have the option to choose whether you want Word to show the number on the first page. So this is a really useful option if you've got a title page, for instance, and you don't want the title page to have the number one on, you can untick this box. If you click on the format option, this dialog box would look very similar to the, the caption dialog box for the tables and the figures. So here you can choose the format of your numbers. And just like the tables and figures, you can choose whether you want to include the chapter number within your pages, in which case your page numbers will restart numbering at the beginning of each chapter. And then there's the option to continue numbering from a previous section. And this will become useful once you start using table and section breaks, which I'll explain in the next video. I don't currently have any section or page breaks within this document so this option is irrelevant and then you can also choose whether you want to start your numbering at a number other than one if you don't specify a different number here then word will automatically start numbering your pages from one so here you'll see that my first page does not have a number although it is page one of my document so my numbers start showing on page two and then continues to page three and four and so forth. Once you've numbered your pages, this allows readers to reference different types of information that you will include in the preamble of your document. One of them being the table of contents. And you'll see here I've created a space where I can insert my table of contents and it's important that you insert the cursor where you want the table of contents to go. If you want to insert a table of contents into your document, you need to go to the References tab, and then you'll see that there are a number of options for adding a table of contents. If you click on this drop-down list, you can either choose a table of contents from this predefined list of options, or you can click on Custom Table of Contents. So the custom table of contents basically allows you to format the table of contents according to how you want it to look within your document. So the first thing is the formats, which basically shows you different types of styles that you can choose. I'm just going to use the template option. And then you can also choose the number of labels that you want to include within your document. 
This is very important because the table of contents is a piece of information that your reader can use to reference information, basically shorthand information. However, if your table of contents has too many level headings and your table of contents runs across three or four pages, it'll be very difficult for readers to find information within all those pages. So as a rule of thumb, I generally recommend that you only have two pages max worth of information in your table of contents if you are writing a master's research report. And if you have a PhD that has a lot more information, you can go up to three or four pages. But the idea here is not to include every single heading within your document. The idea here is to make it easy for your reader to find information within the document. So I'm going to leave it at three headings. Sometimes two headings is sufficient as well. You can choose to show the page numbers or not. If you want the reader to find the information within your document, then you would need to say show page numbers. If you include show page numbers but you have not numbered your pages then the page numbers become useless you can also choose whether you want the page numbers to be aligned to the right of the table of contents or to be right next to the heading number and then you can also choose whether you want the page numbers to be links so just like the captions of the tables and figures if readers then click on that link, it will jump to wherever that information is within the document. And then here you've got the tab leader. So you can choose whether you want to change the style of your tab leader or not. Um, and then you can also choose none, of course. The danger with choosing none is that it might be very difficult for readers to match the headings to the pages. So I generally like to include a tab leader to make it easy for readers to see that. A very last option here, if you click on options, is that, again, this will only work if you've formatted your document using the Styles and Navigation pane. This allows you to format other types of headings in your table of contents. So let's say, for instance, that you've created your own style um, for your appendix, for instance, and maybe you've got more than one appendix and you want each appendix to show up in your table of contents in the same way that heading one shows up in your table of contents you can then add the number to this table of contents level so basically what you would need to do is you'd need to find your heading that you formatted within the list and then choose the table of contents level you want it to look like so if you want it to look like heading two within your table of contents you will choose two or three or one or whatever your needs are at that particular time. You can then click OK and OK and Word will then generate your table of contents based on the options that you've chosen. And of course, these are links. So you can click on them and then the document will jump to wherever this piece of content is. The last two items is the list of tables and the list of figures. Again, you would need to put the cursor where you want the list to go. If you stay within the references tab, you'll see here in the box where we inserted the captions that there is an option here to insert table of figures. If you click on this, the dialog box looks very similar to the table of contents. What you don't want to do here is to choose a style that is very different from your table of contents. So if you have chosen from template, for instance, in your table of contents, then choose the same option for your list of tables and figures. That way, the formatting within your document will be consistent. And of course, your Word will show you an example of what that will look like. Similar to the dialog box that allows you to cross-reference the tables and figures, here you can choose whether to include the label and the number of the table or not. I like to include this just to provide as much information to the reader as possible. I like to include the page numbers, otherwise readers don't know where to find that table or figure. And because I aligned my numbers to the right in the table of contents, I'm going to do the same in this list. And then I'm going to use links similar to what I did with the table of contents. And again, I'm leaving the tab leader the same way I left it with the table of contents. 
And really important here is that you need to tell Word what you are inserting a list of. So right now I'm inserting a list of tables. If I want to insert a list of figures, for instance, I'm going to click on figures rather than tables. I'm going to start with tables here and then I'll do another example using figures. And here you can see that all the tables within my document is listed. I'm going to do the same just using the list of figures. Because I only have one figure in my document, that is what is in my list.